I think blob architecture is pretty boring. Somehow by itself blobs lack the drama. Their shapes are too predictable, they're too uniform. Creases are what creates shadows. And shadows, they create compositions. Well, at least in architecture they do. Without them, it's really, really tricky to make something that's cool. So why is it then that the video thumbnail has me drooling over a blob? Glad you asked. There's actually much more to what I would consider to be a cool architectural example that, than just form and form aesthetics. There's layers upon layers of interesting bits that make a building cool with its beauty being just one small part of them. And don't get me wrong, I don't think that the building that I'm going to show you is ugly, not, not at all. It's just that in this case, I don't find that to be the most important aspect of the building. And en enough blabbing, let's, let's go on with the video. In this video, we're coming back to China, Beijing to be precise. Mad Architects with Ma Ya Song, really hope that I'm pronouncing the name correctly, at the forefront of the company, have done something quite spectacular here. They've managed to push through a reflective blob proposal for a site that's considered a heritage protection area in the city. Those of you who've tried getting a building permit in these kind of old town, old part of city town areas are currently experiencing these kind of Vietnam flashbacks and sorry about that. And they haven't done this once, by the way. No, no, no. They did it twice. So there is Hutong, Hutong Bubble 218 and Hutong Bubble 32. For a while, I'll talk about both of them as if they're kind of the same project because they are very similar. Okay, so first of all, what is a Hutong? Basically, basically, a Hutong is a narrow, narrow alleyway that... Um, is located in a like traditional residential area and it's mostly characteristic of old Beijing uh, old parts of, of Beijing right so narrow alleyways in old parts of Beijing and these two projects they are first and foremost renovation projects that transformed these hutong houses into modern res residencies right for people to live in and to work in. Both projects, they involved adding a new bubble uh, to existing structures of the, of the buildings. Uh, and these bubbles would provide like natural light, new, new windows, and they would uh, create circulation and they would kind of give people a chance to look around from, from a little bit higher up to the surrounding areas in, in Hutong, in the neighborhood. In bubble, 218 if i remember i have them written here 218 uh, in bubble 218 the blob structure um, functions as a staircase with open floor space at the top right so it's it's kind of changing uh, function and in bubble 32 it's a staircase envelope again but this time this time with a bathroom literally literally a toilet in a blob I love this. I love this so much. And of course, these kind of renovations, they uh, included additions, like additional functions to the buildings themselves, such as like the kitchen area, if I remember correctly, the dining area, and they moved around stuff on the inside. So uh, updating the existing living spaces. And by the way, just uh, as a side note, I must say, just looking at the pictures, those were really tastefully done. So it's great on all sides. Okay, so now let's talk about the interesting bit that is, how the hell did they get the building permit? And I must warn you about this one. This is anecdotal, right? So take this information with a little bit of grain of salt. But if there is, even like half of it is true, this might become a very, very strong argument for these kind of modern injections into old towns that worldwide, 
right? It's it's a very, very good frame of reference, I, I should say. So, the bubbles, the bubbles themselves, they were made out of this lightweight steel structure that was assembled in a factory off-site. And it was done so to reduce the impact on the site, you know, during the construction, which makes sense due to historical value of the site, right? The structure is then cladded with either highly reflective steel, uh, like metal sheets, or ETFE film. It's really, really hard to say, as different sor sources point to different materials. But that's not the point, though. The point is seamless reflectivity, I should say. Seamless ref reflectivity. As I mentioned at the start of the video, the bubbles do not have a composition of their own, right? Instead, in this instance, they simply reflect and distort the surroundings. They inherit the detail frequency and the color palette of the context in which they are built, becoming you know, by themselves super contextual. And this this argument of them becoming super contextual because they don't have a material of their own or materiality of their own held up. It held up in Beijing and in 2008 the first bubble was approved for building. A building permit was granted. And 10 years later, in 2018, another one popped up. And I really, really hope that these kind of bubbles will keep popping up every 10 years that would be awesome <laughs> and i don't know what it is about them that i like so much it's something gets me it's maybe it's the very human scale maybe it's the this kind of a, a, unapologetic interaction that the, the new has with the old or rather uh, maybe a typical has with the strange Maybe it's just the fact that the inside of them is so utilitarian, you know, it's like Hey, it's a fancy staircase, in it? <laughs> it's just a fancy bathroom, in it? But most likely it's a combination of all those things And I strongly believe that this combination makes them beautiful in a way that has nothing to do with composition or aesthetics And I really hope that you agree as well I'll see you in the next one. Later. I wonder how often you need to clean those facades. Mm. Anyway, if you like the video, please leave a like, subscribe, write a nice comment. I read all of the comments, I try to reply to all of the comments, and I really appreciate, you know, all of the support. And okay. <laughs> okay. We're done. We're done now. See you next week. See ya. Bye bye. Bye.